So earlier this week, I was watching the football. The Euros are on right now, and it's the first round of the knockout stages. And I don't normally watch football, but when the magnitude of the moment is so high, there's something in sport that's just so live and direct, and that it can almost seem like miracles can happen. Now, this isn't a story about a miracle per se, but Ronaldo was up. It was nil-nil, extra time. Ronaldo had a penalty, and this happened. Ronaldo. Saved by a black. It just will not happen. So you see, he missed it. Normal thing that can happen in football. You take a penalty, you could miss it. Obviously, with Ronaldo, you might expect him to score more often than not. Then a few minutes later, the cameras cut back to Ronaldo, and he was doing this. I mean, look at him now, look. Well, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. No. There's still 15 minutes to go, and he might have to take another one. But he carries the weight of a nation on his shoulders. So you can see there how much it meant to him. That's the way I kind of took it, how much it meant to him and how kind of upset he was that he missed. That was an opportunity to guarantee his team to get through to the next stage. And they could all, they, you know, they, maybe they they wouldn't go through because of that. Now, in the UK, especially, and, in the, and then probably in America as well, maybe Australia too, seeing a grown man cry on TV playing sport is an easy target for the press. And so, you know, the next day, I see headlines all on YouTube, on the news, kind of like this, this stuff popping up here. Watching the BBC coverage of it later and hearing how the pundits are talking about it. It's kind of a mixed bag, but a lot of the pundits are kind of harsh towards Ronaldo. Now, as someone myself who pretty much didn't cry once during my 20s, I might have made fun of him too back then, 10 years ago. I might have judged him in the same way too. But as someone who's done a lot of soul searching and come to learn how important it is as an adult, especially an adult male, to be able to cry, to let off that emotional steam, to find balance. Often when we're not balanced, we're depressed because we're repressing such emotions and being able to cry is an amazing ability that we had as a child, that most of us has as children. And for whatever reason, through fear growing up, we lose it and then we choose to make fun of others when we see them cry because it makes us uncomfortable it reminds us of when we were sub in our subconsciously in our soul reminds us of our, when we were children and our dad made fun of us for crying or the men in our lives made fun of us for crying and so they thought it and we were told it was brave to not cry so therefore we judge someone and many of the male british pundits judge ronaldo as being weak or selfish for crying now my take on why it appears to me that Ronaldo's crying is he wanted to get through. He had an opportunity to help his team get through to the next round. The The weight of the world was on his shoulders. The weight of his country is on his shoulders. And Ronaldo is someone who, who thrives to carry that weight. And then he puts everything in, all his eggs in that basket. And it didn't come to fruition, missed the penalty. And it meant a lot to him. Now, I read later, actually, that he looked up at his mum and his mum was crying. <laughs> and that that kind of triggered him to to cry even more. Um, which you can imagine that. And, you know, Ronaldo, I think he's been through a lot of tough times. I think he lost his dad at a young age. And I think they had a a child who died very... I'm not sure if it was a miscarriage or if he had a dad, a child who died very young. But someone who's been in the sport for as long as he is, I think he's 37 or older right now, and looks still looks pretty young, looks like the healthy guy. I don't think football means as much to anyone else in the world. As, as it does Ronaldo if there is there's only a handful of people that football means as much to as Ronaldo and so for me to see this I was like go on Ronaldo like let it out and to see him get judged and called weak and selfish was was quite I mean not surprising for the world we live in but I just thought I wanted to to address it and discuss it because I think it's important um, to discuss this stuff and understand it because I think it's the when there is so much talk about mental health and then you see a man crying and we make fun of it, there's there's a big disconnect on why we're, we're, there's so much mental health issues in the world today. So there are cases where people cry for selfish reasons, absolutely, or to get sympathy. And they use crying as a tool to get sympathy from those around us. And so they, they're crying all the time. And I think so Andrew Tate, I don't particularly listen to him much, but I've heard his takes on things like crying and maybe in his childhood, his mother would cry all the time for sympathy. So therefore, she's use, using crying in a selfish way to get people to feel sorry for her. And so therefore, 
someone like Andrew may project that form of crying when they see anyone cry, they think they're only crying for that reason. And so that's another reason people may judge when someone cries because what was acted out to them in childhood was people only cry if they want sympathy. And my mother did it all the time or father, whoever it was. If you look at the alternative to crying, if Ronaldo or other football players, English football players, Carrie Kane missed a penalty in similar tournament a couple of years ago. If you're playing a football game and you want to win and you miss a penalty, you're going to be upset, right? And there's two ways that upsetness can go. You can, well, there's three ways. You could be angry and frustrated and kick the post, kick the floor, shout, scream, whatever, project it outwards or project it inwards in like a self-hatred, like, oh, I'm shit or whatever it is that, that could go on the voice in someone's head. You could do what Ronaldo did, which is a more true emotion. He's sad. He wanted to score and he didn't. Ergo, he's sad, which very much reminds me of my seven-year-old nephew when we're playing a game a few years ago he, he would cry if he lost any game now he's I can see he's starting to repress it a bit more which I don't know is a good thing but you see it in essentially you see it in younger children and it, they are closer to their true emotion anger is a cover-up emotion for the sadness when someone's lashing out it's because they don't feel safe to feel the grief that they truly feel and then the other one is spiritual bypassing is to go, you know, just let it go and and don't feel anything when truly like you wouldn't be in that position that Ronaldo or Harry Kane's in if they didn't care about it. <laughs> so that's the possibly the worst one to go down, which I've been down, is to just everything's okay, let it go, move forward, think positive, think positive, and then you don't deal with the emotion at all and it just stays there. So Ronaldo is someone who's probably had a lot of uh, sports psychology and and help around this and probably good advice I've even seen him uh, had a having discussions with Jordan Peterson to help him and Jordan Peterson is another man who seems to have in the last few years discovered again the power of true emotional release as a man as a man who had a lot of ailments coming to find emotions through a relationship with God or whoever that is but feeling and releasing those emotions now, shortly after he missed the penalty and extra time finished in a draw, it went to penalties again where each team takes five penalties to decide who's going to be through to the next stage. Guess who stepped up to take the very first penalty in the shootout? You guessed it. CR7 himself. This time scores! <laughs> and you can see there cool as a cucumber, completely composed, inch perfect, keeper dived, there was only inches it could fit between the keeper's glove and the post and he nailed it. Now, to me, this is where the sports psychology of this whole thing gets fascinating. And beyond that, what we can learn to take into life. The way I see it, because he dealt with his emotion, while it happened, he missed a penalty in the game and cried. When it came to the penalty again, there was no emotional signature left over in him. There was no self-resentment. There was no self-doubt. There was, I, you know, this is my take on it. He'd, re he'd released that moment from him and was ready to go again. And this is the difference. This is where, as we get older, as humans in sport is a great way to see this. We don't deal with our, when we're younger, we're maybe more passionate and we're more upset with a loss and we're more excited with a win, whatever it is. And then as we get older, we become more come see, come sa, whatever it is, and less passionate. Whereas he's still just as passionate. Let let himself cry about it. Came up to the penalty again, composed, had no emotional signature left over and was able to score it. Now, of course, he may have missed that second penalty and maybe we're having a different conversation and maybe it's a spiral, whatever it is. But this this is the way I see it. This is what I took from it. Ronaldo was literally crying as an eight-year-old playing football, <laughs> crying during the Champions League final for Manu. He's an emotional guy. Journalists trying to use his tears to paint him as a sociopath is pathetic. Ronaldo cries when he falls short of the high standards he set himself. England players like Bellingham, Ray, Rice and Kane go into denial and blame the media for criticising them. I rest my case. So there you go. There's, there's the exact comparison of an English attitude. And this is, you know, you can see the cultural 
emotional ideology is at play here between an English attitude and a and a Portuguese, you know, where we see some European, Spanish, Portuguese, maybe are more comfortable with emotional men. What does it matter if he cried for his nation or himself or both? What does it matter if a leader cries? Seriously, WTF. <laughs> yeah. Well said. There's no shame in a man crying and having emotions. We need to stop thinking like dinosaurs. <laughs> Spot on. Great comment there. Christiana looked up at his mother and saw her crying. That's when the tears came down. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You can criticise him for crying until the cows come home, but he has got the guts to take the first penalty in the shootout. Fair play to the man. That's why he's got the guts, I think. Because he cried, literally. Connect the dots. Men can't even cry at all without people clowning them. Yeah. Dear oh dear. No, no wonder men don't show emotion. Honestly, here's a, here's a comment that's probably the most spot on. He cried, released his emotions on the spot, gathered confidence from the teammates, scored the penalty in the shootout and Portugal are through. And now you cry pundits. Irony. <laughs> Not the ending you wanted, right? Yeah. Apart from the sarcasm i think that comment was spot on he cried released the emotions on the spot gathered confidence scored the penalty that's it released the emotion people are getting people are getting it <laughs> comments 158 likes on that comment so you get the point it's quite nice just to see how many of the comments were defending ronaldo and is is crying there and we're saying it's mostly just the pundits and the media and the press that were making fun of him for crime so it's it's interesting that it that there is this concept that I have held that many people hold that it is weak to cry picture yourself in that position with a camp every camera's on you the world's watching and I would find it harder to cry I would find it easier to just bottle up and stiffen up so for me that's emotional bravery to let him to to, to have the humility to let yourself feel what you feel, that's humility, to allow yourself to feel what you feel as you feel it and not feel like you have to stiffen up and repress it and boil it down and project it in a safe way that people might accept. They might accept anger. We accept anger more than we accept tears, as you can clearly see. Just thought I'd share that, that I actually think the way we look at emotion says a lot more about us or it says a lot more about the press than it does about Ronaldo, you know? Um, and as I mentioned earlier about my nephew crying when he loses, Ronaldo crying when he misses a penalty, it just reminds me of my favourite quote from the Bible. That's Matthew 18.3. Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So I'm not saying playing football at the level of Ronaldo is a step closer to heaven by any means. <laughs> but allowing himself to feel about what he's taking part in like a child can allow themselves to feel is a step closer to a more fulfilling life where we live you're living your dream and life can be maybe a step closer to heaven and to the way i believe god designed it for us all to be and to exist in this world what are your thoughts about crying what does it make you feel seeing another man cry about missing a penalty in a game of sport. Yes, there's other discussions to be had about sport, whether it is important or not or whatever. <laughs> but for this discussion, what do you feel seeing another man cry on TV like that? Thanks for watching. Maybe see you in the next video. Godspeed.